الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله The viewers of Madani Channel Welcome and marhaba to another episode of this beautiful silsila of Blessed Sira of beloved Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where we discuss the Mubarak lifestyle of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, which inshallah will be a means of inspiration for us to draw from the Mubarak lifestyle of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam learn his sunnah, learn how he dealt with uh, life matters you know the things that happen in our everyday life the challenges that we face how he fought those challenges and inshallah it should be an inspiration for us, his Ummah, inshallah, to take and derive lessons from those pearls of wisdom, from the lifestyle of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers, as we discussed in the previous episodes, the hardship that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through when he started to propagate Islam, the kalima la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and how he was persecuted by the kuffar of Quraysh, by the kuffar of Makkah, Allahu Akbar. And not only him, but his Sahaba, his companions, they had to endure all that hardship, the ill treatment that the people of Makkah inflicted upon them. Allahu Akbar. The kuffar also mercilessly persecuted the Muslim Ummah, the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah, particularly those who were poor and destitute. Can you imagine? It would have been easier for the kuffar to have killed the Muslims in revenge. But this would not have been enough for them as their pride lay in Muslims renouncing Islam and returning to idol worshipping. They therefore tried all they could to terrorize the Muslims into doing so. However, Allah Azza wa Jal is witness that Alhamdulillah, none of them wavered the slightest and remained steadfast on Tawheed, on the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal and on the Kalima of Islam, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah. This should be a lesson for us from the uh, life of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that come what may, it never took their iman away, Allahu Akbar. Nothing was harsh enough and hard enough and difficult enough for them to give up their iman, subhanAllah. The sacrifices that they went through, Allahu Akbar, these sincere Muslims were subjected to extreme forms of torture, including being made to lie on their stomachs in the blistering heat, while boulders, Allahu Akbar, boulders that had become extremely hot due to the intense heat of the sun, would be placed on their backs. Branding irons were used to scar them and they would be held underwater until they could no longer breathe. Some were forced to inhale smoke while wrapped up in mats in an attempt to suffocate them. Allahu Akbar. Dear viewers, these are some of the torments that the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu went through for the sake of their love for our beloved Nabi sallallahu and their love for Islam and for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. Dear viewers, Sayyidina Khabab radiallahu ta'ala, a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu who accepted Islam in the house of Sayyidina Arqam radiallahu anh, when the Muslims were only a few in number. The Kuffar's persecution of Sayyidina Khabab radiallahu ta'ala had no bounds, such that on one occasion they made him lie on burning coal while someone stood on his chest with such force that the burning coals became extinguished. Allahu Akbar. When he related this incident to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala who during the caliphate of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, raising his clothes to reveal large white patches upon his back. The Khalifa Sayyidina 
Amir al-Mu'minin Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu could not bear the sight and broke down in tears. Allahu Akbar, such painful punishment they, they the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu went through for the sake of Islam. It's unimaginable. Sayyidina Bilal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who was the slave of uh, the notorious Kafir Umayyah bin Khalaf. He would be dragged through the streets and marketplaces with a rope around his neck and would be whipped on his back. Allahu Akbar. At exactly midday when the sun's heat would be at its most unbearable, he would be made to lie on the scorching sand while huge boulders would be placed on his chest that would cause his tongue to protrude. Subhanallah. This is the, the, the courage of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Allahu Akbar, that despite all of this, Umayyah would say even this to him, renounce Islam, otherwise you will be tortured to death. Yet, subhanallah, despite all of this, all of the hardships, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu's iman was unshakable. And in fact, he would loudly proclaim when Umayyah would ask him to renounce the kalima of Islam. In, in his response, he would loudly proclaim while being punished, Ahad, Ahad, Allahu Akbar. There is only one worthy of worship, Allah, and remain steadfast on Islam. Subhanallah, this is the sacrifice of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the muazzin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa whom even Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say, Bilal, who was Sayyiduna, subhanallah, Bilal, he is our leader. And Sayyidina Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu ta'ala anhu was also persecuted in similar ways, being made to lie on the ground while the disbelievers of Quraysh would beat him to the point of unconsciousness. His mother, Sayyida Sumayya radiallahu anha, became the first female martyr when Abu Jahl thirst a spear into her womb. Allahu Akbar. His father was also martyred due to the torture inflicted upon him by the kuffar. The viewers, the kuffar would beat Sayyidina Suhaib Rumi radiallahu ta'ala so forcefully that, and mercilessly that he would be uh, rendered unconscious for hours. He was told, you can immigrate to Makkah if you leave all your wealth and belongings here. Dear viewers, and he happily did so. He left everything for the sake of Islam and abandoned the wealth of the world for the wealth of Iman, subhanAllah. This should be our attitude towards our deen. Allahu Akbar, let's not take it lightly. This Iman that the Sahaba have sacrificed their lives they, and, and everything that they had for the sake of Islam, Allahu Akbar. It hasn't gotten us so easily. So inshallah, let's learn to treasure it and, and protect it with our own lives, inshallah. Another companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who accepted Islam with Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu was Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha. And who, he was a slave of uh, Safwan bin Umayyah. When Safwan came to know of his conversion to Islam, he tied a rope around the neck of Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha radiallahu ta'ala anhu and dragged him through the streets as well as forcing him to lie down, or, uh, lie down on his back upon scorching sand and placed a stone upon his chest one day. When Safwan was dragging Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha radiallahu ta'ala through the streets, his eyes fell upon a dung beetle and he said to Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha, Look Abu Fuqayha, are you sure this isn't your Lord? Allahu Akbar Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha became angry and said in response, Be quiet, O son of Kafir, my Lord and your Lord is one Allah, subhanAllah. And Say, Safwan became infuriated with Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha's reply and choked him with such force that many believed that Sayyidina Abu Fuqayha had passed away. This is the torture, dear viewers, 
that the Sahaba of Rasulullah they, 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 they endured and suffered. This is the sacrifices for the sake of Islam, for the sincerity on the deen of Allah and for the pleasure and love of Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Another Muslim to be persecuted endlessly was Amir bin Fuhaira, who uh, would be beaten so mercilessly that his entire body will be swollen and in excruciating pain. During this period, during this dark phase, the close companion of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Yari Ghar Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, exhibited great generosity and selflessness by saving the lives of many poor Muslims and sacrificing vast amounts of his wealth in freeing defenseless slaves, the likes of Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Amir ibn Fuhaira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Abu Fukaiha, Sayyida Labina, Sayyida Nahdiya, Sayyida Umm Ubais radiallahu anhu majma'in. Allahu Akbar. These were the great Sahaba that was rescued by the efforts and the sacrifices of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala and Abdalul Bashar ba'd al-Anbiya'i bi taqiq Subhanallah. When uh, Sayyidina Abu Zar al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala and accepted Islam, he arrived in, in Makkah as a traveler and stayed in the Haram. Each day he would proclaim his acceptance of Islam despite the kuffar beating him so much that his body would be drenched in blood. Allahu Akbar. He had no food or water but would suffice on drinking zamzam water during his stay. Subhanallah. This was the perseverance on deen of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wasallam. It was not only them that were subjected to this uh, per persecution and the oppression of, of, of the kuffar, Allahu Akbar. They, the kuffar wouldn't even leave anyone who embraced the, the religion of Islam, Allahu Akbar. Such was the, the hatred for Islam. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us firm and steadfast and grant us the ability and tawfiq to, to persevere at the time of difficulty and inshallah never let go of our iman. When the persecution of Muslims, it escalated, when unrelenting oppression of kuffar became unbearable, dear viewers, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa told the companions that if they wished, they could migrate to Abyssinia, al Habsha. The king of Habsha, his name, he's, he's known as uh, Najashi. He was a staunch Christian, but immensely just and merciful. And he was well versed in Torah and Injil. Five years after the announcement of uh, Nubuwa by our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the announcement of Islam, 11 men and four women migrated to Habsha in the month of Rajab that year, after five years from the time of proclaiming Islam, inshallah. Now, as the, the companions that were ill-treated by the kuffar of Makkah, when they migrated from Makkah Mukarramah on the command of beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the permission of the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they, they, were, they were followed. Even then, the kuffar of Makkah wouldn't leave them in peace. Sayyidina Usman al-Ghani radiallahu ta'ala, these were the people that migrated, the first migration that took place from Makkah Mukarramah to Abyssinia. And in this first migration, Sayyidina Usman al-Ghani radiallahu ta'ala and his wife, Sayyida Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala, the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and Sayyidina Abu Hudayfa and his wife, Sayyida Sahla bint Suhail. And there was this companion of Rasulullah Sallallahu Sayyidina Abu Salama radiallahu anha and his wife Sayyida Umm Salima radiallahu anha. And um, there were also many other Sahaba such as Sayyidina Amr ibn Rabi'ah and um, Sayyidina Zubair ibn al-Awwam, Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umair, um, Sayyidina Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Sayyidina Usman ibn Maz'oon and uh, Sayyidina Abu uh, Sabra 
ابن ابي رحم and سيدنا سهيل ابن بيضا and سيدنا عبد الله ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى صاحب الوساده now when the kufar found out about this migration the first migration that took place by the permission of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and these sahaba when they migrated from makkah mukarrama the kufar they became anxious and they found out about this this migration they immediately dispatched a group of people to capture those who had left but they were unsuccessful they couldn't catch them as the muslims had already boarded the ship to habasha to abyssinia subhanallah the muslims arrived in habasha in abyssinia and were able to practice islam safely and peacefully a few days after the arrival a rumor spread that the kuffar of makkah had embraced islam upon hearing this rumor some of them returned back to makkah only to realize that the rumor was untrue from those who returned to makkah a few returned to al habasha while others remained in makkah secretly the viewers however those who chose to 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 remain in makkah secretly were found by the kuffar and were persecuted even more mercilessly than before allahu akbar consequently the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam instructed a second migration to abyssinia and this comprised of 83 men and 18 women they included those companions of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the first migration who had returned and stayed in makkah secretly as well as others now the disbelievers when they found out about this they resented that the muslims were able to lead peaceful lives even in abyssinia they sent therefore uh, the the ambassador amr ibn al as uh, umar ibn al walid with precious gifts to an najashi in order to bring about the uh, the immigrants extradition and return them back to makkah when they arrived and entered najashi's court they prostrated they made sajda before him and presented him the gifts proclaiming o king a number of criminals from makkah have escaped our lands and taken refuge in your country please return them to us najashi was just so he sent and and he summoned the muslims he sent people to call them he summoned the muslims allowing them to speak for themselves the muslims elected sayyidina jafar ibn abi talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu uh, the brother of sayyidina ali radiyallahu anhu as the spokesperson in this in this matter thus sayyidna jafar radiyallahu ta'ala stepped forward and contrary to custom he simply greeted najashi instead of prostrating to him he never made such that to najashi as people used to do and um, when najashi's courtiers they reprimanded sayyidna jafar radiyallahu ta'ala for this behavior he replied our prophet muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam commands us to prostrate only to allah subhanallah this was the response of sayyidna jafar ibn abi talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu then turning to najashi sayyidna jafar ibn abi talib radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said o king we were in a state of ignorance and immorality we worshiped idols eating carrions we committed all sorts of wickedness we honored no relative and assisted no neighbor the strong among us exploited the weak then allah azza wa jalla sent us a prophet one of our own people whose lineage truthfulness loyalty and purity were well known to us he sallallahu alaihi wasallam called us to worship allah azza wa jalla alone and to reject the stones and idols which we and our ancestors used to worship he sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us to always speak the truth to remain true 
and to trust and to, to be trustworthy and honor the promises to assist relatives and maintain ties of kinship to be good to our neighbors to abstain from the unlawful and and, and bloodshed and to avoid fornication and false testimony he sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded us not to steal the wealth of the orphan or to falsely accuse a chaste woman he ordered us to worship allah azza wa jal alone and never to ascribe any partner to him dear viewers of madani channel najashi was overwhelmed with sympathy upon hearing sayyidna jafar radiyallahu anhu plea and seeing this amr ibn al as the ambassador of the kuffar attempted one last time to persuade the, the king and said najashi do you know that these muslims hold beliefs regarding your prophet sayyidna isa alayhi salam which are completely contrary to yours thereupon najashi turned to sayyidna jafar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and questioned him regarding this and sayyidna jafar radiyallahu anhu replied by reciting verses from surah maryam the effects of which brought najashi to tears allah akbar sayyidna jafar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu further said that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has ordered us to believe that sayyidna isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wasallam is a servant and messenger of allah born to his righteous and chaste mother sayyida maryam radiyallahu anha without a father and as a sign of the power of allah azza wa jal subhanallah the king listened attentively to sayyidna jafar radiyallahu ta'ala and then said sayyidna isa alayhi salam was indeed the servant and messenger of allah I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and messenger he is the same prophet about whose arrival sayyidna isa alaihi salam gave glad tidings of it in injil had i not been bound to remain on the throne by the rules of kingship i would have gone to makka and devoted myself in his service subhanallah these were the words of sayyidna najashi radiyallahu ta'ala anhu who embraced islam and subhanallah what a beautiful occasion for him and he fell in love with our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam instantly so much so that he wanted to devote himself in the service of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had he not been tied to the the responsibility of of handling the affairs of uh, the, his country upon hearing these words some of najashi's servants who were staunch christians were infuriated yet najashi sayyidna najashi radiyallahu an he silenced them all sayyidna najashi radiyallahu an returned the kuffar's gift to amr ibn al as and umara ibn al walid and expelled them from his country he gave amnesty to the muslims and he said you may reside in peace and harmony in my kingdom wherever you want i shall not extradite you all no one can harm you in the slightest subhanallah these were the words of sayyidina najashi radiyallahu ta'ala an sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam devious as we learned about these events that led the muslims and our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to migration to madina munawwara these were the events that occurred that forced the, the muslim that forced the sahaba of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that forced our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam to go out of the city of makkah and migrate to madina munawwara allah akbar as as we just learned about the sahaba of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that they migrated firstly to habsha and abyssinia prior to the migration of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba to to madina munawwara from makkah mukarramah and as we know that madina munawwara 
was originally known as Yathrib its name. It was renamed Madina, Madina to Nabi, meaning the city of the Prophet ﷺ, when our beloved Nabi ﷺ settled here after the migration after Hijrah. Thereafter, it has uh, become commonly referred to simply as Al Madina or Al Madina Al Munawwara, subhanAllah. It was an ancient city inhabited by the tribes of Aws and Khazraj, as well as some Jews. The majority of the people of the two tribes, Aws and Khazraj, were idol worshippers, just as the Kuffar of Makkah were. And while the Jews were the people of the book and were therefore a way of uh, the coming of the final messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the tribes of Aws and Khazraj lived in peace and harmony until as uh, was the common in, in, in Arab history, fighting broke out between them, between the two tribes, Aws and Khazraj, which culminated in the war of Buath. And the outcome of this tremendously bloody battle was that almost every brave fighter of both sides was killed during this combat. Significantly weakening both the tribes and their strengths. Despite being very few in number, the Jews of Madina Munawwara were more educated and knowledgeable. And for this reason, Aws and Khazraj were subordinate to the Jews. After accepting Islam, however, and embracing the teachings of Rasulullah all of the prior disagreements and discord between Aws and Khazraj were put to an end, subhanAllah. They, they were given the title of Ansar, the Aws and Khazraj, when they got united through the Barakah and, and for the sake of the love of Rasulullah and Islam, they were given the title of Al Ansar, the helpers of Rasulullah by the Messenger of Allah. For the, the tremendous and sincere help that they rendered to Islam and the Muslims, subhanAllah. A service also praised in the Holy Quran and loving them and extolling the, the merits and virtues is an integral part of being a true mu'min, being a true believer, being a true Muslim, subhanAllah. The love of Sahaba is very important, dear viewers. Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam has beautifully says, my Sahaba are like stars. If you follow any one of them, you will be guided, inshallah. Even though Aws and Khazraj were idol worshippers, their daily dealings with the Jews of Madina Munawwara meant that they were aware that the final messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would soon appear. In fact, the Jews of Madina Munawwara would frequently threaten them saying, soon the final messenger will come and you will leave your idols and put an end to your idol worshipping. And for this reason, both Jews and Christians awaited the appearance of the final messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah subha taiba mein hui badta hai bala noor ka in the 11th year of prophethood as this was the custom the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to the plain of mina at the time of hajj to preach islam to the pilgrims who had come to perform hajj he وسلم, was at Al Aqaba when six individuals of the tribe of Khazraj approached him. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, asked of their names and lineage. He وسلم, then recited a few verses of the Holy Quran and invited them to accept Islam. And profoundly moved by the recitation of the Holy Quran, the six looked at each other and said, Indeed, this is the final messenger whom the Jews have been giving glad tidings about. SubhanAllah. Allahu Akbar. Why should we not believe in him before they do? After they said this, they duly embraced Islam upon returning to Madina Munawwara and invited their families and tribesmen to accept Islam. SubhanAllah. The names of individuals are and Sayyidina Abu Umama, Sayyidina Auf, and Sayyidina Rafia, Sayyidina Qutba, Sayyidina Jabir, Ibn Abdullah, Al Ansari, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, Subhanallah. 
these were the fortunate individuals and this happened prior to the migration of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Madina Munawwara. Through the, the sincere efforts of the six individuals, these six individuals that embraced Islam and made bay'ah and took pledge of allegiance on the hand of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the following year, meaning the following year after that, 12 individuals came to Mina, meaning Al-Aqaba, and accepted Islam. They also pledged their allegiance to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this pledge is known as Bayatul Aqaba Al-Ula, the first pledge of, of Al-Aqaba. And they requested the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to send someone with them who could teach them about the laws of Islam and so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umayr ta'ala anhu to accompany them to Madinah Munawwara. Sayyidina Mus'ab bin Umayr ta'ala anhu took up residence at the house of Sayyidina As'ad ibn Zurara radiallahu anhu. He made great efforts in inviting people to Islam, even knocking on the doors and visiting each and every house of uh, the Ansar. This resulted in at least one or two individuals embracing Islam on a daily basis, subhanAllah, causing Islam to spread very quickly from Madina Munawwara to Quba, subhanAllah. The leader of the tribe of Aus was Sayyidina Saad ibn Mu'adh, an exceedingly courageous and influential person. And when and invited by Sayyidina Musa bin Umair ta'ala anhu to accept Islam, he initially had reservations, but was later inclined towards Islam upon hearing the recitation of the Holy Quran. On Sayyidina Saad ibn Mu'az accepting Islam, his tribe Aus followed him and also became Muslims. Subhanallah. And this is the similar, there's a similar incidence of the second bayah of al aqaba that took place in the 13th year of prophethood during the Hajj season. And in this bayah, approximately 72 individuals pledged their allegiance at the blessed hands of Rasulullah Sallallahu and promised to sacrifice their lives to protect our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for Islam. Subhanallah. These were the things that, that happened prior to the migration of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Madinah Munawwara. Allahu Akbar. Our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his blessed Sahaba, Allahu Akbar, they were tortured to an extent that they were forced to move out from the city of Makkah Mukarramah and were forced to, to seek uh, the residence elsewhere in the Mubarak city of Madinah Munawwara, Allahu Akbar, the final resting place of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allahu Akbar, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala keep us steadfast on the deen of Islam. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa sallam Oh Allah, increase our love to the Prophet